Hi, my name is Fred Newman. I'm the owner of the View Camera Store and Fred Newman Photography. And today I'd like to give you an introduction to large format lenses. Um, two of these lenses are great for 4x5. One is good for 4x5 and 8x10. And I'd like to go into details about all the little dials on the lens for you. So um, I will do a close-up so you can see it better. The first lens I'd like to show you is a Schneider G Claron 150mm lens and it's an F9. I like the idea of the uh, using the G Clarence. The um, F9 makes the lenses kind of small, so they don't they're not real heavy. So I'm just going to take the lens cap off. This is the lever here. It's for opening and closing your shutter. So if you when you want to focus, you open the shutter, and you can see it's wide open here. And then when you when you're all focused and ready to go, you close. Open is up. Closed is down. This is the cocking lever right here. and that's your shutter. Right over here is where a cable release goes. Let me just put a cable release in. Now on most view camera lenses you've got T where you, let's show you how it works, you click the shutter once and then you click it a second time to close it. And bulb, you click it and hold it and then let go. And the rest are all timed from one second to five hundredth of a second. So you can see the shutters right here, the speeds, and they're in, in one stop range. And also on the bottom of the lens, you can see all the information too, the shutter speeds and the f-stops. On the top here, you can see the f-stops from f9 to f64. So you have to approximate between, like let's say it's f11 and two-thirds, you'd have to sort of approximate it like that. So these go in one stop, and again, you'd have to approximate the other shutters. Actually, let me take off the rear lens cap so you can see it better. Forgot about that. So let's... Let's do the T again. You can see it open and closed. And again, this is the lever here. Open the lens all the way. It's for opening and closing. So for focusing, you flip it up, and that's for flipping it down. And this is in a number zero shutter, so it's nice and small. Also, um, for 4x5, when you think about lenses, if you're used to 35 millimeter, and let's say you had a Leica M with a 50 millimeter, let's say Summicron. Um, in 4x5, a 150 would be equivalent to a 50mm and 35mm. And if you're going to 8x10, a 300mm would be your normal lens, equivalent to a 50. So it's three times the focal length of a 35 approximately for a, a 4x5, and six times the focal length for an 8x10. And next I'll show you um, a lens in a number one shutter. Ready. The second lens I can show is a Nikkor W210. This is a good um, lens for like portraits for 4x5. <laughs> or a longer landscape lens. And again, you've got the little lever here for opening and closing the shutter. So when you want to focus, you open it. And when you're ready to take the picture, you close it. A good idea is when you close the shutter is to cock the shutter with a little lever here. And let's set it on something reasonable, like half a second. Now it's a good idea to always do this once before you take a picture, because sometimes you'll have the lens like this. You'll take the dark slide out and you go around to do it and you go like, whoops, I just exposed my film. So it's always a good idea to close this, cock the shutter once, and then click. And again, each shutter is slightly different. This copal, this is a copal number one, and this one you can see it, it's got in one third of a stop as you adjust the F stops. So let's say you want to do 60, F16 at two thirds, you'd go right to here. And again, you've got your F stops, shutter speeds, and on the bottom of the lens, because sometimes you're short and you've got the lens set up kind of high like me, so you've got to look on the bottom, so you've got your shutter speeds and your f-stops on the bottom here. This, the third lens I want to show you is in a Copal 3, so we've seen a 0, a 1. Usually zeros and 1s are best for 4x5 lenses. Copal 3 sometimes for a 4x5, a lot of times for 8x10, so it all depends on the lens. And this has a different place for the cable release right here, and once again you've got a different way to do it. This is your lever to open and close the lens. So again, when you open it, close it, again, you always want to do that. You always want to make sure you cock the shutter at least once. I'm going to repeat this because I know everyone who in large format has made the mistake of pulling out a dark slide and the bigger the size film, the more expensive you've wasted film, so you don't want to do that. So always go once and then click it again and then pull your dark slide out. Let's do it once more. 
And you notice with the um, couple three, it goes T for time, bulb, one second to one twenty-fifth. The thing is, I would say the higher shutter speeds are not real accurate on most of these shutters, so I'd recommend probably a thirtieth or less for all, whether it's a couple zero, one, or three. And again, you've got your, sh your uh, shutter speeds here, your apertures on the top. Again, this one does not have the third, so you have to approximate, let's say we got F22 and two thirds, you'd have to approximate it right there. And again, on the bottom, you can see the same thing, it's set for one second, and F22 and two thirds, so it's right there. Your cable release is in a different spot right here. So this is number three, it's, it's kind of larger as you can see, and I'll do all three together so you can see the difference. Now you can see the difference in the shutter sizes, a zero, a one, and a three. It all depends on the lenses. And this, I just wanted to see it's more of a close-up of the size of the shutters. And also, you're thinking about with, with carrying your, your camera equipment out in the field and hiking and backpacking with your view camera. Um, you may want to think more of zeros and ones just because of weight and size considerations for hiking. And it's a, again, number three is usually more of an eight by ten size. In future videos, I'd like to go with the, uh, more about different lenses. Um, unfortunately, there are no longer many view camera lenses made today. Schneider uh, discontinued lenses last year. Fuji and Nikon probably about five or ten years ago dropped all the lenses. They stopped making them. And Rodenstock just has a few lenses left, a 135, a 150, and a 210, Apple Siren RS, and I'm not sure how long that's going to last. So. In future videos, I'd like to go over each of the camera manufacturers from my experience using you know, various lenses so I can help you pick the best lenses for you. Unfortunately, now that most of the lenses are going to be in the used market, you're going to have to be careful as a consumer because sometimes the description doesn't match. You know, when, when I say it's excellent, it probably will be. I try to underestimate you know, the description of the lens, but a lot of times they'll say it's wonderful and you look at the lens and say, I don't think so. So um, a whole new bunch of considerations come up when purchasing large format lenses. So I'll, I'll go through some of the lenses that I've experienced with and some of the different manufacturers and different recommendations for different formats. So in future videos I've got a lot of plans for but right now this will, this will cover the start. Thank you for watching.